Own the roof. Why rent when you can own the roof? We specialize in connecting renters and home buyers with down payment assistance programs and grants currently available, even with less than average credit. Let us show you how to purchase a home with just a few thousand dollars out of pocket. Attend our free weekly webinar, The Top Ways to Purchase with No Money Down, by registering at nodownpaymentrequired.org. Hey, good evening. My name is John Collins. Thanks for attending my webinar. This evening, we're going to focus on understanding the mortgage industries, what they look for in the mortgage world. The mortgage world, they look at all three credit bureaus. They're going to look for TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. Within those credit bureaus, there are literally hundreds of scoring models out there, depending upon what industry. The mortgage industry is the only one that has a standardized model that everyone follows, and that's the FICO. And right now, the FICO models that they will use and accept are two, three, four, and five is the new one. Now, keep in mind, if you're going out there and getting your free score through Credit Karma, it's not going to be the same credit score. Okay. That's a just a totally different algorithm. But I find that the Credit Karma score on average can be about 20 points higher than what we might see in the mortgage world. They look at all three credit bureaus and look at the scores from all three bureaus. They pick the middle one. Most credit creditors out there, they're going to report to typically two of the three credit bureaus. And the reason that is those creditors have to pay every time they send your information to the credit bureau. There are some credit building companies or credit building tools that we're going to talk about this evening that will report to all three. I always try to isolate the lowest score really doesn't matter much. Let's say, for example, you had a credit score of uh, 550, 600, and 650. That means 600 is going to be your middle's credit score. That's what they're going to base your file off of. So typically what we would do then is take a deeper dive and see, hey, which credit bureau is showing or reporting that? See if there's something on there that we can get a quick spike in. If not, then we want to possibly try to add credit to that particular credit profile to manipulate it up. That's what I mean when I say I want to isolate and look for quick spikes in your score. What goes into the credit score? 30 35% of what goes into your credit score is based on your payment history. So obviously, if you have a clean payment history, that's what that's what counts the most in the credit bureaus or the algorithm's eye. If you do have some late payments out there, it's not terribly difficult to sometimes get those things removed if that late payment was an isolated late payment. I find that retailers are a little bit more flexible. Uh, grocery store, Macy, JCPenney, places like that. So if you have any retail credit cards, they're a little bit more flexible. They want to continue to have you to shop there and don't want you upset. Obviously, we talked about Toyota. Sometimes if you have isolated late payments on, a, on an automobile, they might be willing to work with you. Oddly enough, it really depends on who you get on the other end of the phone. Some places just have hard policies where they say no, and I certainly understand that, but doesn't hurt to ask. The amount of uh, credit available on credit cards, they call this credit utilization. So the amount that you have borrowed against a card or credit card is he right now. We are making big strides on this one. Right now, I'm seeing that the actual default rate for credit cards is actually skyrocketing. The default rate for auto loans is skyrocketing. I'm thinking that the algorithms might actually be getting smarter to the point where if people are paying down their credit cards in this environment where other people are trending in the wrong direction, I'm finding paying down that the credit cards is getting a bigger bike than normal. So what do I mean by that? So let's say you have a $300 credit card and it's maxed out at 300 or even worse, if it's over the limit, if you're over your limit, that is just, that's a big kick in the shins on the credit reporting algorithm. If you take a, a credit card that has a $300 limit and you owe 320, because maybe you max out your card and your payments, not 30 days late, but maybe a week late. So it, so they put the interest on top and it, that kind of bumped it up temporarily. Your credit utilization exceeds 100% then. So if you actually take that and pay that all the way down to 30%, 30% utilization is the key. So if you pay that amount down below 30% or 30% of 300 is $90. So if you took that credit card that is over the limit and paid it down, 
down below $90, you're probably going to get a good 50 point spike in your score right now. Next thing I want to focus on uh, length of credit history. If you have a loan that's out there for quite some time, that's a big benefit. If you have a credit card that's out there for quite some time, huge benefit. Do not close any accounts that have been out there a while. You get a lift from having that length. Part of the algorithm grades things based on your length of credit history. Other thing to focus on, please do not pay off loan. If you have a car loan and you think, oh, wow, I only have uh, six payments left. I'm just going to pay those six payments off. Well, your credit score could go down. Okay. We don't, because you're closing out an account. You'll have the history because it'll show paid as agreed, of course, but you don't have the uh, uh, a, a lot of trade lines. So if you have a thin credit profile and not a lot of lines of credit, keep as many out there as you want. You Because the reason is you can see your score. You know what you have. Once you pay that off, we don't know what's going to happen. More often than not, I'm finding sometimes the scores can go down. That's what goes into a credit score right now. I'm briefly going to touch on how to handle some of the things that are big tripping points. Uh, student loans. Student loans are a lot easier to wrestle with than they were a year or two ago. So if you try to get financing in the past and were tripped up by student loans, that's a totally different conversation right now. We can take income-based repayment plans that are you know $10 a month I, and run with it. So I had someone that had uh, $100,000 in student loans. They went on an income-based repayment program. That income-based repayment program, once we took it out of forbearance, put them at a third $30 payment. They used that $30 payment to qualify for a loan and we got them into a house where a year or two ago, that wasn't even an option. The algorithms and the uh, lenders are becoming a lot more friendly to student loan. Repossessions. Repossessions, they're actually old repossessions, ones that are over a couple of years old. They're actually becoming more friendly with those too. I actually just had someone last month that had a, re they co-signed a loan for a family member car that was repossessed. And unfortunately, it was a six thousand dollars that was due and it was showing up they didn't want to pay it and oddly enough when the lender ran it through their automated underwriting system they did not have to pay off that six thousand dollar automobile collection first time i have ever encountered that don't want to say that that's commonplace but obviously it's something to keep in mind don't race to pay off those repossessions until we talk or any collections for that matter i'm going to jump right to the collections whoever i'm talking about so when it comes to paying off collections, please don't pay anything over two years. If you have something on your credit report that's over two years old and it's a collection and it's under a couple thousand dollars, absolutely do not pay that off. What's going to happen is if you pay that off, it's going to show up on your credit next month as, you know, for example, next month paid collection and your score will go down. You are reactivating those collections and it's going to show up on your credit report next month, dragging your scores down. Now, after 60 or 90 days, your scores will go back up because the algorithms are a little more forgiving once the collections are paid. But just the same, uh, if you are trying to get some financing or get into a place sooner than later, if you paid a any type of collection off and it shows up as paid next month, you can see a 20, 30 point drop in your score. So that can undo some of the things that we're going to suggest this evening. Medical collections. This was just announced by Fannie Mae a couple of days ago. Fannie Mae is no longer taking medical collections into account nor asking people to pay them. That being the case, medical collections are something that you can just kind of set aside and we'll have to deal with on a case-by-case -case basis. No sense paying something off unless you have to. I'd rather see that money being used to open up new lines of credit that are going to add to your credit profile and get a quick bounce in your score that are much more predictable. If you have any collection accounts that are less than a couple of years old, I would say if they're six months to two years old, those we need to almost run through a simulator to determine whether or not it's worthwhile paying those off. More often than not, uh, I might tell you to just leave those out there, okay? Collections that are six months or less, okay, once they hit your credit and it's fresh, then if you pay them off, yes, you could get a lift in your score by paying off a relatively fresh collection. But if it's not fresh, uh, don't pay it off, in my opinion. Uh, bankruptcies. So uh, if you are just coming out of a bankruptcy, chapter seven, you have to wait two years from the discharge date to 
do anything. If you actually have a chapter 13, you can actually buy a house while you're in chapter 13 bankruptcy. As long as your first 12 months, as long as your last 12 months payments to the trustee have been paid on time. So there are options for people in chapter 13. For these programs, I go into a lot deeper dive on my uh, other webinar. That's every other Thursday. So if you'd like more information, detailed information, tune in next Thursday and I go even a little bit further down the rabbit hole. So that's what we look at or they look for in the mortgage industry. So where do we go from here? Please reach out to me. I'm going to put my contact information in the description. Thank you very much for attending and uh, hope, uh, hope everything goes well for you in the future. Take care. Goodbye.